Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Today, once again, we have a lot to do. Step one, we need to start exploring. A lot. Step two, we need to get some hatches going and that way we can sustain our coal power plant. I figured we also put a nice little power control station in here too to maximize the benefit and keep us on coal generators for longer. And then step three, we might try to dive into the beginning of the largest oxygen delivery system you have ever seen, folks. Yes, you heard me right, the biggest, the baddest, delivering the most oxygen to all the duplicates you need. Now, whether or not we get to that this episode, I don't know, but I already have the design going in my head. The hatches, they're gonna be pretty easy. We're going right here. We're gonna set up probably at least one ranch to start with. We might break into two, depending on how fast we start using coal, but the exploring, the exploring is gonna be a little bit more difficult. We need to pay particular attention to the temperatures around here. We don't have Atmos suits yet, so getting into this cold biome here, out of the question. Breaking into this carbon dioxide next to this cool steam vent, out of the question. It's over 70 degrees and would scald our dupes. Now the good news is, believe it or not, we have time. We have 57 tons of algae and 30 tons of coal. By then we can get our hands on one of these Drecos, start ranching Drecos, which will give us enough thimble reed to build some Atmo suits. Another thing I'm thinking about is I'd like to put a metal refinery down. In fact, let's get it started on research now. You can see here we're only one away, so it's very easy. We'll click it and go. I was first thinking about putting the metal refinery here. We can draw all the water out of here, run it through once, and just dump it off into here. Fact is though, the metal refinery gets pretty hot itself, and then we got hot liquids, and this is very, very close to our base. So then the question is, where do we put it? The next natural thought would be up here. This isn't too bad, we can consolidate all this water and maybe put the metal refinery over here. And that may be what we do. It'll give us a lot more polluted water to work with. And what this means is we'll be able to go a longer amount of time on this amount of water, running it through once, maybe twice through the metal refinery before we need to start investing into a proper industrial area. And that may be one of my favorite things about this playthrough. I have spent more time paused, staring at the map, trying to figure out the next directions to go and what to put down than I normally do on one of my standard playthroughs. And it's because with this many dupes, each choice is gonna matter so much more. And then that massive oxygen center I told you about, it's gonna take more than 7.8 tons of gold amalgam. So we have plenty to do, and I believe it all starts with doing some more exploring. Speaking of which, decent news, right south of our base, we found one other geyser, can't wait to crack that open and see what it is. But whenever you come up against a lot of problems and they start to seem too massive, the best thing you can do is break them down into smaller parts. So we're gonna stop, slow down, and just look at one problem at a time, starting with our hatches. For instance, I had already started the research behind metal refinery, and then I realized we don't have any of the tech we need to start ranching hatches, like the grooming station or the critter drop-off, not to mention the incubators. So we'll just go ahead and click on animal control, let them power through this, and then we'll get back to metal refinery. In the meantime, there's still some stuff we can build over here. We finished up our research and we have our perfectly working stable here. Now it's just time to clean it up and then put some hatches in it. Looks like we have one little buddy just can't wait to get in. We're gonna be feeding sedimentary rock from the start to make sure they try to produce us some stone hatches. Now we're gonna be using the standard slow method of incubation on the eggs. And the reason why is because we're running a limited number of hatches. Remember, it takes 20 cycles for a hatch egg to incubate, which means that over a course of 100 cycles, each incubator can, the slow way, produce five hatches. So two incubators, this will give us 10 hatches, which is plenty enough to keep an eight hatch ranch full. Now, if we decide we need more than one ranch, then we can change up then, but for now, two slow incubators, not using any power, will work perfectly. Now this little task here reminds me about some of the stuff we've been doing in the background. You'll see that we're sweeping everything out and that way the hatches don't gobble everything up. So we've been storing things the sort of old fashioned way of just throwing them into storage bins. Eventually we're gonna set up our infinite storage area, but we don't even have that researched. Every time I go to put a system in, I realize, oh yeah, it's only cycle 36. As an example of that, I already put in the power control station, 
getting ready to hook up our 50% power increase for our coal generators, and then realized we don't even have any dupes who are electrical engineers, despite having 14 of them. Quite frankly, we haven't had a good operating dupe, nor have any of the other dupes been around long enough to actually get that skilled up, especially our newer ones. This reminds me that we probably should start leveling up some of our earlier dupes, but we are going to make sure to keep them no higher than 5 or 6 morale. We don't want this morale requirement to fluctuate too much. Right now our dupes have a max requirement of about 6 morale, which sounds good, even our Great Hall gives us that, but if they start having a bad day and lose some morale, we don't want to start stressing them out. So we'll take both of our researchers, increase their skills up, and then our ranchers and farmers as well. Looks like even a couple of our diggers are ready for some more responsibility. Allison's now into super hard digging, and Eilart just learned his grilling number two. And just like that, it's time for another dupe. I was really hoping for somebody with operating, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen. I was thinking about getting our next cook, but quite frankly, Nicola starts off with hard digging, but he has undigging. So that kind of crossed them out. Frankie requires light to sleep, and eventually we may need a whole barracks full of dupes that require light to sleep just to get some good dupes. But in this case, we're going to take a Camille, who's got a bunch of positive traits, and it looks like they're just going to be a general supply dupe. Welcome dupe number 15, the FAP engine. Just going to search briefly around our colony, we already found six regular hatches. And some of them are even decently young to where they have enough time to be tamed. And then laid some stone hatching eggs. We will see. But for now, I think we're not even going to bother incubating regular eggs. We're just going to wait for the stone hatch eggs. But I think we're going to start digging strategically around we have some more room that we can go this direction before we start hitting heat. So why don't we take a quick peek out there and see what's going on. Now we're still going to be careful, but in this case we can just go over and grab it. All of this is oxygen, so it doesn't matter what we're releasing. So that'll be easy peasy. Same with over here. We're just going to grab and go. The great thing is we can even start inspecting things and grabbing the beautiful data banks. That's our first data bank, by the way. Now this area right here, specifically by the mealwood, is a lot warmer than what our mealwood's like at 30 degrees. So after we get done exploring this little area here, we're probably gonna go ahead and insulate it up. And that way we don't have to worry about stifling our crops. We also have a ways to go where we can build up. So we're just gonna rock and roll that way, all the way up there. Gotta be careful that sand or somebody's gonna entomb themselves. Make that number seven. We found one hiding out in the bathroom. So you might be wondering what we're gonna do with the rest of the eggs until we start getting stone hatch eggs. We've got omelets on the menu. It's starting to get to the point where we need some more duplicate beds, so I figured we're gonna go ahead and expand. And this time we're actually gonna expand out to the east side of our base. We're also going to be building some up here because we're eventually going to have to go this way as well. To kind of put it into perspective, this entire row is only 16 cots, which means two levels is 32 and three levels is only 48. We need more than three of these sections to somehow fit in our central base, which then brings up another great strategy question. In Francis John's 100 run, where he went up towards, I think, 124 or 128 or something, he created giant duplicate habitats that held 40 duplicates each. In this run, we're going to be using one giant base. We also need to be able to cram in 150 mess tables. I've got a different sort of design that we're going to use with it, but the only key here is we probably want it centrally located, close enough to the cot area, close enough to the bathrooms, and close enough to where all the food's being produced. For now though, we have 28 mess tables in here, so we're good for a little bit. I wanted to show you something sort of depressing. This entire tundra biome, and not one single geyser. I'm really starting to get worried that we maybe have rolled one of those limited geyser maps. Uh, this is not going to be great if we can't find some more water. Normally these biomes have one or even two of them, especially a big one like this. Dupe number 16 comes to us without much fanfare. I was looking at a nails and an ass can. Ass can's actually a pretty good doctor decorator and I thought about taking a second one. But Marie here is a plus 10 cook who also gets bonuses at night, likes animals, just 
doesn't care about digging and won't do any attacking. So I think we're actually going to take dupe number 16 as a Marie. So welcome, Mr. DK Oz. So while we're digging here, I figured we might as well dig all the way to the Abyssalite to include over here by the Mealwood. This is going to give us a couple of advantages. All this warmer debris will drop down and only heat this area next to the mushrooms. And the mushrooms like a little bit of heat. Plus, it'll give us a little bit more visibility over here to see if there's any sort of vents or geysers. Okay, some good news, some bad news. The good news is we have a bunch of regolith up here and a bunch of shovels. The bad news is we've hit space and uh, no geysers or vents to speak up over here. If only you could see the tears on my face as we welcome dupe number 17. First, I'm like, oh wow, we're already at 17 dupes. Second, still no operator, so I still can't get into our electrical engineering and our mechatronics engineering. On the good news, we have another farmer who's pretty good. Welcome to dupe number 17, Doritos P. Remember that time I told you I was crying? Now it's increased into like a feverish sob. This geyser down here turned out to be just another minor volcano. So far, the only water sources we have on this colony are this cool steam vent and this cool steam vent. We're starting to dig over a little bit more. We've got to find some water on this planet or we might have to get off of it. In between bouts of crying and sobbing, we're also going to be insulating in this area here, being especially careful right around these parts to make sure that we don't drop any of this water. Because this cool steam vent has a lot more area to fill before the steam vent will actually get stifled, it's going to generate a lot more heat than this one down here that is, quite frankly, almost stifled already. Once the water gets to a certain level, the cool steam vent will not be able to erupt anymore, so then we can take our time before getting to it. This one over here, though, that's an awful lot of hot steam and water that we'd have to contend with eventually, especially considering it's so close to our base. So we're just going to go ahead and insulate it in. Our explorations have revealed a natural gas geyser. We could get a little bit of water out of this, but it's not a whole lot. The good news, though, is we'll be able to run natural gas generators eventually. Well, this is the moment that disaster ensued. Apparently, the phosphorite didn't hold the water just as well as I thought it would, so we're making a giant mess. Additionally, all of our dupes are going to get a little bit hot. You can see here that they have the toasty surroundings and sopping wet debuff. Mental note, phosphorite is just as bad as dirt and sand. By all means, J-Ray, take your time. No worries, no hurries. Just let all the water drain, buddy. So apparently this is the doomed 150 dupe run. We finally have a dupe that can do some operating, or at least enjoys it. And they're a Ludite. That's right, folks. Our first operating dupe is a Ludite. Welcome to the colony aptly named dupe number 18, Gave Up. Now, just because Gave Up is a Ludite doesn't mean they can't eventually become better and better at operating machines and the good thing is we are one skill point away from getting electrical engineering and electrical engineering will allow us to turn this power control station on when it rains it pours sadly i completely forgot about using some deodorizers and now we're left with a giant mess now it's not too big of a deal we're just going to throw a bunch of deodorizers in here get it all cleaned up and make sure that polluted oxygen stays where it's supposed to the worst part of this is running all the power lines. It's just so much compared to how it used to be. You used to be able to just throw down the deodorizers all willy-nilly and everything was going to be good. All right, we'll see how long that takes for it to fix the issue. The idea is that all this polluted water is going to pull, and the only place that we want this polluted oxygen to come out is right through here, so that these deodorizers can gobble it up and turn it into clay. All right, the deodorizers really do make quick work. We've managed to clean up a lot of it already so it's time to get in here what we're gonna do is dig over in fact we're gonna dig a little bit more over we're gonna let all of this polluted water just straight drop through here and then we're gonna core the whole thing out we're also gonna see what's behind goody door number one so here we are once again at dupe number 19 and i really wanted to take this ellie they actually have building and operating they enjoy doing some digging and their germ resistance. Unfortunately, they are a mouth breather. This makes it like 151 duplicates, and we already don't have enough water for five duplicates, never mind 151. So then that left it between Harold and a Nicola. Nicola's disadvantages are a critter aversion and small bladder, which is not really a big deal, but Harold, at least, he has something new. 
Harold might be our first rocketry dupe. Welcome to the colony, duplicate number 19, Lindsay Grossman. Now, Lindsay's not going to need rocket piloting for quite some time. So we're actually going to put him into improved carry for now. Now, to remind myself that they're actually going into rocket piloting, I'm going to leave them without a hat for now until they get that second skill point. And then we'll throw them into rocket piloting and be able to put the hat on. Now, the astute among you may have noticed that we only have enough food for 17 duplicates right now. And this is okay. I want them to start using some of that old pickled meal before it goes off before we start planting more crops. And eventually the mushrooms will take over and this will give us another 20 something dupes worth of food. Now the door revealed three lockers. So far we've gotten our beautiful data disks, including one locker had four data disks, which is really cool. So far we've only found a warm sweater. Really looking forward to hopefully getting a couple of snazzy suits. And there it is, snazzy suit number one. We'll go to duplicate number one, Miko. Come get your clothes on. And before I could even finish a big enough task to show you guys in the background, we are welcoming dupe number 20. Sir Ruff is going to be a suit wearing researcher, probably the dupe that's going to be doing some of our early space research. Welcome Sir Ruff. Same thing, we're going to go with a point of research and not necessarily a point in piloting yet. So in the interest of not showing you yet another dupe coming through the printing pod quite yet, I wanted to show you the progress we've made here. We've managed to core out this entire slime by, well, okay, not the entire slime biome. It keeps going up and up and up. But this is going to give us an excellent spot. I think what we're going to end up doing is putting our metal refinery here, the pump over here, so it takes all this cold water, brings it up over here, and then dumps it right over here. I have a small concern of us dumping the hot water so close to our base, especially with our nice thimble reeds growing. So we're going to take good care of that. We're also going to throw in a layer of insulated tiles right down here. Except this time we're not going to crack the entire thing down, so we're going to be careful. Famous last words. And once again, the game is not being very kind. We have a cooking rocketry tidying, a doctor in farming, and another doctor. In this case, I actually think we're going to be taking the doctor farmer that's a weird mix, but I guess it's good to have two doctors, and we could always use the extra farming support, so... Welcome dupe number 21, Dayok 13. Now, we're not going to worry about coring this area out, but at the minimum, we can get up here and make some damage happen. By draining all this water, it'll just give us more coolant to go. And eventually, we're going to be turning all this polluted water into oxygen anyways, and oh yeah, by the way... Still haven't found any water geysers. Now we're about to build our metal refinery and it's a little earlier than we normally build it. In fact, we don't have any great materials like ceramic to build it out of yet. So we're just gonna go ahead and build out of granite. Granite does have the benefit of having the plus 20% decor and the overheat temperature of plus 15 degrees. Now the plumbing's nice and easy. Like we said before, the pump's gonna come from the bottom right. It's gonna go straight in here. And then we're just going to bridge it over the other side, making sure that we put the bridge in the correct orientation. And then we're going to dump everything right over here. Next comes power, and this is a little trickier. Now, we could run it right off of our main grid here, but we don't even have conductive wire yet. So we're just going to grab enough copper for a little bit of conductive wire and our smart battery. Let's do 20 for now. We don't want to waste too much because as soon as the metal refinery is going, we'll be able to make all of the copper we need. Oh, I'm getting a little excited. Check this out. It's a neutronium patch. It's time to dig straight up. Let's find out what is behind door number one. We're going to get up here. We're going to dig this out and we're going to check and see what it is. And lucky for you, we don't have face cam on, so you're not going to see a grown man cry when this isn't water. Here's one of these beautiful, rare situations where it's a permanent waterfall because there's a block of carbon dioxide in here. Now you could leave this here for a long time. Unfortunately, it does sort of impact the flow a little bit. So sometimes it's advantageous just to throw a block in there, kill the carbon dioxide, deconstruct the block, and then move on throughout your day. In other good news, we finally have an electrical engineer. Gave up's gonna grab the little stick. Microchip's gonna go into one of these coal generators. Whamma whamma. Still waiting. Still waiting, gave up. All right, and after multiple breaks, we finally have Engie's tune-up. And based on gave up skill, this Engie's tune-up is going to last 
3.7 cycles with a power output of plus 50%. That makes your coal stores go a lot farther. Oh, and just like that, it's time for dupe number 22. On the bright side, an ASCAN is actually decent at operating. They're innately stylish and they love animals. They're a little squeamish, but no big deal. Nobody really cares about that. Welcome dupe number 22, Sko Davy. Another great thing about ripping through that slime biome is we've got a ton more dust caps. We've really been able to kick our mushroom growth into overdrive. Just on mushrooms in Millwood, we can support 22 dupes. We're still sitting at 175 tons of dirt and 20 tons of slime. We've got some more water to drain, and the good news is this, this is kind of chilled too at 20C. Once it comes all the way down here, it'll help keep this little tank cool. Average temperature right now is about 28 degrees. It's not looking too bad, but once we start piping a lot of the metal refinery through it, that's going to be bad news bears. And I know what you're thinking. We have all of this that we could be using to keep this cool. Not yet. We will get there. Oh, sweet Randy. You were kind to us today. Look at that. It's a regular water geyser. Now, we can't break into this quite yet because, as you can see, it is erupting at 95 degrees. We can do one of two things. Wait till it's dormant or wait until we're in suits. And now for this beautiful plan. What we're going to do is put some metal tiles all the way down and allow this tank to siphon all the chill out of this biome, which will also melt it. Despite the fact there are some significant breaks in this biome, you can see here this point of interest building when it was planted broke this abyssalite. So even the top part of this biome is only minus 8 degrees. Compared with the natural temperature up here, it's minus 40. But we'll do it the favor of siphoning all that chill out of there. We've gotten four pieces done so far. We need one, maybe two more, and we'll be good. Now, copper is not the best at thermal conductivity, but a metal tile still beats anything that we have. And will you look at this? Our first few pieces of copper are coming out now. Our little system is working like a charm. I have a couple of storage bins set up here, one for copper ore, one for gold, and one for iron ore. The power system is easy enough. We're producing 1200 watts into a smart battery, and we made sure to put it on automation. That way we're not burning through that coal too quickly. And that power line just goes down to our plumbing. Now, realistically, this is only gonna help keep this whole pool chill for just a little while. It's not gonna be too big of a deal, but any little bit helps, even though we are pulling from the very far corner. So it's gonna be a long time before the water that drops down in here and getting chilled makes its way all the way over here. Before we call it, we gotta take a look at our resources because I know that is a concern. We actually have more algae than we started with in this episode. We also have more coal. On the food side of the house, we're sitting at 147,000 calories, doing nice there. 21 tons of slime means our mushrooms are gonna be doing fine for a long time, and the 173 tons of dirt are gonna keep us going on mealwood. All in all, we got a fair bit explored. We're still looking for some more water sources. Hopefully those will come in the next few episodes. I hope you had as good of a time as I did, and I'll talk to you soon.